Hey everyone, my name is Yasmina and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about the best tools for writers, in my personal opinion. These are just some of the things that help me as a writer and who knows, maybe they will help you too. So without further ado, here are my best tools for writers. So starting with the most obvious tool for writer, word processors. What is good, what is bad? Of course, as with many things, the best tool is the one that works best for you. But in general, writers prefer some kind of combination of these three word processors, Google Docs, Word, and Scrivener. Personally, I've only used Google Docs um, when critiquing other people's work or when sending my work to be critiqued by others. I think it's easier to keep track of things like that with Google Docs, especially if you don't want to send the whole manuscript all at once. So my preferred are the other two, Scrivener and good old Word. <laughs> so the way I use them is I basically use Scrivener for drafting. I think it's amazing for the beginning stages of writing, for outlining, writing out scene cards and just generally writing your first draft or even, you know, your second draft. And you can definitely continue on with all of the other drafts in Scrivener as well. However, I found that in the later stages, so when I have a more polished draft, I like to look at it in Word and I like to look at it in that final manuscript format because it just gives me a better view of what my book reads like as a manuscript. So what my agent will see, what my critique partners will see, what my beta readers will see, and ultimately, hopefully, you know, what my readers will see. So when it's in that specific format with that specific font um, and layout, you know, it feels like a proper manuscript to me and it makes it easier to edit as well. It makes it easier to read. In general, I would advise you change something uh, about the format of your document when you're editing because I found that it really helps to just see it in a different format, whether that's a different font, a bigger font, a smaller font, even a different color, uh, more spacing, less spacing. It helps to just kind of differentiate between what you wrote in the first draft and what you're trying to do now, which is make it better and it's easier to spot mistakes when it's in a different format. That was a long ramble for basically, I use Scrivener for drafting and I use Microsoft Word for editing. And I highly recommend both. I'll link Scrivener in the description below if you're interested in purchasing it. I don't think I need to link to Word. Everyone knows about Word. Moving on. The next tool I want to mention is actually maybe not a tool necessarily, but it's NaNoWriMo. Now, if you're a writer and you've never heard of NaNoWriMo, what rock have you been living under? <laughs> Seriously, NaNoWriMo has been around, I think, for 20 years or something ridiculous. NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month, and it takes place every November, where everyone participating is trying to write a novel of 50,000 words in a month. And if that sounds easy to you, <laughs> it's obvious you've never attempted it, my friend. It is damn difficult, but it can be done. And in general, it's just a lot of fun to surround yourself with different writers. That way you can get writing friends, you can get critique partners, you can get beta readers, and you can just have fun writing, you know, join in writing sprints on Twitter and things like that. And I just think it's super, super helpful, especially if you're feeling a little unmotivated to write, or maybe you have been sitting on this idea for a very, very long time, but you don't know where to start. Join NaNoWriMo or Camp NaNoWriMo, which takes place in either April or June or July, I'm pretty sure. One of those two. It's basically the same concept. Um, but yeah, NaNoWriMo and Camp NaNoWriMo, loose term tool, but I do think it's incredibly useful, especially for beginning writers who kind of want to dip their toes into novel writing but are not sure where to start. Participate in NaNoWriMo. Honestly, it helps so much. Next is an app I use a lot when I'm writing and I think it's useful for me and it might be super useful for you and that is called Noisly and it's this free uh, website, it's also a free Google Chrome um, extension that basically gives you ambient noise for when you're writing. You can mix all of these different ambient sounds together to create your own little mix um, and it's just really nice to have in the background especially if you need some kind of background noise to write to or if you're trying, like me, to drown out sort of outside noise. And if nothing else, it really helps me get into that writing mood, you know? When the little rain droplets are on in the wind and all that leaves blowing in the wind, it's like, yes, now it's writing time. So I highly recommend checking into that. The next tool is one that I use so much, especially when editing. Oh, actually, 
mostly exclusively when editing. And that is a website called thesaurus.com. And as the title suggests, it is a thesaurus, but I actually only use the synonyms function. So basically, I tend to overuse certain words, certain adverbs, things like that. And sometimes, yes, you can just remove those words, but other times you just want to replace them uh, with something unique. And other times I simply cannot think of a word. I know there is the perfect word to describe this thing, but it just my mind is blank. And so I go on thesaurus.com, I plug something in the synonyms search bar, and then I get so many words. So many words, so many similar phrases and things like that that I can choose from. Now, word of caution, be careful because yes, you can go a bit too far and use really strange words that people don't actually use when they talk to each other. So be careful, stick to, you know, words that you hear in normal conversations and words that fit your own writing style and your own theme and atmosphere and things like that, um, or words that your characters might use, because obviously you will get some really weird rare words on there as well. For the most part, I find that a lot of the suggestions are words that you can just plug and play kind of to replace that one word that you definitely overuse too much, Yasmina, come on. Yes, most of the times you should cut it out, but sometimes, sometimes you just need another word. And so thesaurus.com is where I go to find that other word. The next two tools I will talk about are mostly focused on querying. So if you're planning on publishing traditionally and you're thinking about finding an agent at some point, these two tools or websites are super, super duper useful. The first one is called querytracker.com. This is actually a paid annual service that basically is a database of all of the agents, all of the agents, just all of them. And you can make projects based on the manuscript that you're trying to query and then select all of the agents, obviously first find all of the agents that represent your category and like save them. You can prioritize, you know, which ones you want to query first and which ones you want to query a bit later. You can add notes, you can add, oh my god, this, honestly, <laughs> you cannot go without this if you're planning on traditionally publishing and if you're planning on finding an agent, it's like 20 bucks a year or something. And honestly, it has been the most helpful in finding agents and you can keep track, you know, when you're sent, when you send out a query to one of these agents, you can write, write it down when you sent it. And then when you get a response, you can add in what response you got and it keeps track of how long it took for the agent to respond. And it also has statistics on each agent. Uh, what is their average response time? And there's comments from other users. Honestly, I can go on and on. Seriously, if you traditionally publish, you, you have no choice. You have to, you have to use this tool, trust me. And in a similar vein of queries, that's QuerySharp.com. This is a blog, now it's mostly an archive of this agent that takes in um, query samples and then shreds them to smithereens, you know, it's like points out what's bad about it, why this cannot work as a query and what you should uh, change to improve it. And I've spent so much time reading through all of the submissions of like five years or something. And I think again, if you're planning on traditionally publishing, this is kind of a must to just flip through those archives and look at what makes a good query um, and look at what you can improve um, in your own query. So, query shark. The next tool I want to talk about is Fantasy Name Generator. <laughs> this is honestly a godsend. If you don't know what to name your character, if you don't know what to name your world, if you're trying to find a word to use for your invented um, plant species or this creature that you're building, or even if you want to find a really good, you know, Edo period inspired Japanese name or any kind of name of any ethnicity in this world and in history, you can find it on this website. There are so many categories and it basically just spills out words and things at you that you can use to either get inspiration from, to make your own world and your own names and things, or just just take it, just take it, it's there, it's randomly generated, you just, you can use it, okay? <laughs> it is especially useful if you're writing fantasy, of course, and you're building this whole world, and honestly, at some point, how many inns can you call, you know, the pig's nest, or pig, pig's don't nest? Anyway, you get my point, <laughs> fantasy name generator. 
very useful. The next two tools I want to talk about are actually kind of very similar, so I'll just uh, put them here together, and that is Grammarly or Hemingway Editor. So these are online tools that help you kind of edit your work. You can copy paste a part of your manuscript, so like a chapter for example, and it'll um, automatically sort of detect, of course, any spelling mistakes, but also it looks at adverbs and looks at um, paragraph structure. So if you have a paragraph full of really, really long sentences, it'll point that out to you so you can diversify your paragraphs a little bit with shorter sentences and longer sentences and normal sized sentences and things like that. It looks at everything. It's not a be all end all of editing, but it does help in the initial stage to just kind of get a glimpse of what you're doing and what you can change. But don't just rely on this and call this editing done, okay? Guys, you need to do a lot more than that. But it is very helpful um, and I would recommend you check them out. Finally, the last tool I want to talk to you about is actually books. Yes, my friends, books, read books, any kind of books, but what I want to talk about specifically is writing craft books, such as The Anatomy of a Story, such as Bird by Bird, such as Save the Cat, such as Outlining Your Novel. So you, you, you get my point. I actually just made a video talking about all of these writing craft books. Hopefully I've remembered to upload that one before I upload this one. So if that's the case, good job Yasmina. You can find it in the description down below. So please check out that video for recommendations on writing craft books. But honestly guys, as a writer, you should always be reading. Again, it doesn't really matter what, you can read anything, but just read a lot. But reading writing craft books really helps you motivate you, <laughs> obviously helps teach you new things about writing and, and making sure that you're always improving your craft because as writers, we absolutely must always become better day by day and we should absolutely improve our craft every single day. And so writing craft books are definitely a must. <laughs> Whew, okay. So once again, I've left everything I talked about in this video down in the description below, so make sure you check everything out in case you're interested. And please let me know what are some of your favorite writing tools that maybe I haven't talked about and maybe I can discover something new and something that helps me a lot. So that'd be great, awesome, thank you. Please remember to like this video and subscribe if you like my content and if you want to see more from me. Otherwise, I will see you next Monday. Bye.